That's good enough. That's good enough. So today we've been coming from uh, Oz Cycle Coaching and um, going to do some blood lactate testing today. Ben, so do you want to maybe step us through what blood lactate uh, testing is and I suppose why you use it as part of, I suppose, your, the uh, tools in your toolkit for a coach? Yeah, um, it's, so yeah, like you said, it's a blood lactate test um, and essentially we're taking readings of how your lactate levels change um, in your body um, as you progress through higher and higher intensities. Um, and the reason it's more advantageous to mm -hmm. a standard test. Like the standard test that a lot of people can do is either a 20 minute test on the road, um, or there are a lot of <coughs> ramp tests you can sort of pre-made do on things like Trainer Road, and I think Zwift has one as yeah, well. Yeah, I think so too, yeah. Um, and the difference between those is they're designed to basically take one measurement, so either the power you can hold for 20 minutes or the point that you blow up at, at the end of the um, ramp test. Um, and the rest of your sort of training zones and thresholds are an estimation from that one measurement. Um, okay. The whole point of this is we're taking a whole series of measurements at every 25 watt increment um, and then using all of those measurements to, instead of taking that estimate of your threshold and that, we're actually just straight up measuring it um, and yeah, using all those data points. So those data points, I suppose, right throughout that you're taking at those 25 watt increments, does that then allow you to have a more precise setting of individual training zones, as in your T1 through your T5? Yeah, zones yeah, 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 exactly. Um, because, yeah, like, like for example, knowing your um, FTP threshold doesn't actually tell you, you know, how easy you need to go on a recovery ride. Um, yep. and, and, you know, which point you're actually flushing out, like take acid versus building it up. Um, and whilst you can get a pretty good guess from a, from those other tests, from a standard I, I, sort of test, or yeah, test. I mentioned this doing it this way is a direct measurement of that. Um, yeah. and we just have a, yeah, it's not a guess. We we know what it is. And I and I suppose everybody's going to be different. You know, say two people have a two fifty FTP, they may have different lactate thresholds within that. I take it, like as in for different training zones, different recovery zones. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It can be actually pretty interesting to see the difference between um, people who have a, the same FTP. Um, yep but they can have pretty pretty drastic, different, like drastically different levels in, in every other other way. Okay, so they get, yeah, that's going to be interesting to see. Not for me, because I'll have to be doing it and I'll be basically getting my finger pricked, I'll take it every... So it's pretty much a small small blood test on and you measure it through a lactate, blood lactate machine. Yeah, um, yeah. Add those increments, so every increment, take a little bit of blood, do a test and continue on, is that correct? Yeah, it's only, we only need a drop, it's not... Oh, it's not like I'm envisaging taking. sort of, you know, drastic levels of blood here. We're not taking blood bags. <laughs> um, Those blood bags are for later. That's, yeah, that's right. That's to replenish. <laughs> um, I know we spoke about uh, briefly the other day that you can have a, like for me, for example, I've done a 20 minute power test. That's usually what Trent um, gets me to do um, as part of my program. So my FTP is whatever the case it is. You said that very well, you could come in lower than that with a blood lactate um, test. Yeah. There's like every possibility that your threshold may appear different in that regard. I suppose the question I have is what's the advantage then or what's the benefit if let's say you've got a 250 FTP with a traditional 20 minute or, or whatever ramp test that you're doing and it comes back in at say a 240, what's the benefit in, because I suppose a lot of people would see that as a bit of a kick in the guts, you know, that oh, I'm actually 10 watts lower than what I thought I was, but what's the, is there an actual benefit there? Does that make sense? Yeah, um, it's, it basically comes directly from the fact that we're actually measuring your FTP versus guessing it um, mm -hmm. because the, and that's one of the problems with a 20 minute test is, for example, if you're someone who's been doing a lot of really short, sharp um, training and racing, mm -hmm. and you're yeah, not a whole lot of longer, more endurance based stuff, um, you very well could be capable of punching out a really good 20 minutes, but not actually have that high of an FTP because you're, you're relying more... You're blowing up at 21 minutes for yeah, better Yeah, yeah, and you're using more of your anaerobic system. Um, okay. and, and yeah, so your FTP, it can be misleading in that regard. And you can also have the opposite. You can have someone that's been doing only endurance work and have this massive FTP, but just have no speed in their body whatsoever. Um, and it can be misleading in the other way. They might barely be able to get... Because the 20 minute test is the assumption that you're riding 
five percent above your FTP, and they yep. might not be able to ride at that level um, for another forty minutes. Yeah, right. and and it's worth keeping in mind that the FTP is not, even though it's kind of always used as to describe it as what you can do for an hour. Mm. Um, that's that's not always the case. Like your FTP can vary quite a lot depending on your fitness. At certain points of the year, um, you might only be able to ride at your FTP for forty minutes. Um, if you're training for something like the Graf Indian Rail, you'd kind of expect to almost be able to do 90 minutes at, at that. Yep. Um, and, and whilst it's that same number, how long you can ride it can vary quite a lot. Um, and that's, they're kind of all factors that, yeah, contribute to, uh, uh, what's the word, like, it contributes to being, it, the result being a bit misleading. Right on. And I suppose too, everyone talks about it at the coffee shop, everyone talks about it at racing, you know. It really though is just a metric that you should be using for your training to help everything get better. And I suppose it's not the be all and end all just to chase a massive FTP at the expense of, uh, like you said, other aspects of your, your riding which may be beneficial to anaerobic, you know, aerobic, you know, like depending on what you're doing. Yeah, well, I mean, that, that's something that's quite often uh, not spoken about at the cafe is how essentially useless your FTP is for comparing to other riders. Yep. Um, for example, there's one guy I coach, um, races Masters D. Um, he does okay in Masters D. Um, and he has the exact same FTP as another rider that I coach who just got top 10 um, down at the NRS to retweet. Um, oh. And you know, you're not gonna sit around the cafe and say they're the same rider. No. Um, so yeah, like power is still quite personal. Yep. Well, I suppose we should maybe get into it and um, we'll try to do a little bit of a some editing and some mashup of, of this as we go, and we'll see what see what pans out, and hopefully I don't go too far backwards. Yeah, <laughs> I've got an inflated ego, and that could definitely <laughs> definitely take a big hit. So, oh right, no, we'll get into it. Let's get into it. Special algorithm. That's it. Special coaching fidget business. Which is good way. Perfect. Set up. Laboratory style conditions. I would recommend going and doing a, there's another, test in the Nova. There's actually another test I'd like you to do. Okay. Um, it is just a four minute effort out the road. Oh, is that all? Um, And that, that's purely because one thing this doesn't directly measure, even though you can get a pretty good estimation of it, yeah. but um, from this, it is harder to directly measure the VO2 threshold, yeah. which is different again. Um, Whereas that's something we can, that's one that is, you can get a pretty accurate reading from out of the road. Yep. Whilst I say it's only a four minute effort, it's, it's brutal. Probably not your heart anymore. You can worry about that another day. <laughs> that's future day, no problem. <laughs> I don't know that's green for people knowing I'm not sweating. To be fair, after doing this though, I think my old... Sound of it. Not enough. Oh yeah, I think they were on, mate. So we finished in the lab, now we're in the office, the master's at work. Doing, doing some number crunching. I can only film it from this side though because it's a secret algorithm.
that uh, are exclusive to coaches. We'll update you shortly. So what are we looking at here? Uh, this is the raw um, data, essentially, from the, from the test. So we've got um, what the blood lactate values were at each each sort of interval point. Mm -hmm. um, this is the straight line down here is the heart rate at each point. Um, and then these are essentially, I mean, most of that is uh, ways, a lot of steps that don't mean a whole lot outside of the purpose of working out the zones. Um, but the key ones we're looking for, if Demo doesn't mind me sharing the numbers, um, is the power and heart rate at lactate threshold at the top here. Okay. So um, that's, what's that say, 325.9 and 176.4. So when you talk about at threshold, is that essentially what we refer to as an FTP? Is that yeah, what that is? Yeah, that, that's exactly what, um, the, what the FTP is. That's yep. that functional threshold where um, above it, if you're above that marker, uh, you're, in, you're in trouble and you're minutes away from blowing. Whereas okay. just below it, you could you should be able to do for quite an extended period of time. Okay. The the second one that's important is this um, lactate threshold one, which is your lower lactate threshold, mm -hmm. um, and that's the the threshold that you are able to just below that you will be able to function for quite a long period of time. And when I say a long period of time, I mean you should be quite capable of doing three, four, five hour rides okay. below that without blowing. So is that essentially the top end of what we'd refer to as a T1 for those base Ks and... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, any kind of endurance um, sort of style ride should be done at the, essentially the, the just below that threshold. Yeah. All right, very good. Oh well, that's a good outcome, I'm happy. That's it for today, that's it for Blood lactate all done for today. You know, yep. not going to subject me to any more finger pricks or anything like that. No, no all, the, all the pain's done for now. I think 50% of them were just for fun because I'm sure you were hitting the same hole over and over again there by the end of it. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, so that's um, it's really good. And um, I suppose that's some good measures that you can personalise training now and personalise programs to suit individuals. Yeah, you know? exactly. Um, yeah, and I suppose some of those things that we were talking about through the test about the T2 and the T1 goes to show when you show me those numbers of value in doing those so um, I suppose if your coach puts go out and do a, a T1 ride on your program or T2 efforts um, I suppose I, I can vouch for the the benefit in doing them now so listen to your coach yeah exactly uh, it gives a, a quite a, an accurate um, benchmark to work with um, so you can really get the most out of out of each session excellent Awesome, we'll wrap it up and um, yeah, wait till we do another video of some other torturous event in the future. <laughs> I'll try and be more creative without <laughs> how, how much it hurts. That's right, I'll be the guinea pig for some <laughs> randomised test that you've made up. Uh, thanks.